Welcome to ILTV's Israel Weekly, where we discuss the latest in Israel's geopolitical developments. I'm Aaron Porras, and with me today in the studio are Ambassador Ilan Baruch, who is a former Israeli ambassador to South Africa and a political advisor, Dr. Martin Sherman, who is the executive director of the Israel Institute for Strategic Studies, Dr. Mordechai Kedar of the Begin Sadat Center for Strategic Studies at Bar Ilan University, and finally, J Street U Israel organizer, Daniela Tolchinsky. Thank you all very much for coming in today. Uh, now, today we'll be talking about the World Economic Forum in Davos and a new poll that shows support for the two-state solution is at an all-time low on all sides. So first we turn to Davos, Switzerland, where Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, along with other political and business leaders from all over the world, have come together to advance international cooperation. But apparently cooperation wasn't what interested people most this year. No, this year it was the possibility of a two-state solution, or the lack thereof, following Trump's doubling down on taking Jerusalem off the table. Mr. President, I, uh, I want to say something, because this is the first meeting you've had since your stark decision to uh, recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital and to move the embassy and not to expedite the movement of the embassy to Jerusalem. And I want to say that this is a historic decision that will be forever etched in the hearts of our people for generations to come. Uh, people say that this uh, pushes peace backward, I say it pushes peace forward because it recognizes history, it recognizes the present reality, and, tr and peace can only be built on the basis of truth. By recognizing history, you've made history, and we will always remember that. When they disrespected us a week ago by not allowing our great vice president to see them, and we give them hundreds of millions of dollars in aid and support, tremendous numbers, numbers that nobody understands. That money is on the table, and that money is not going to them unless they sit down and negotiate peace. Because I can tell you that Israel does want to make peace, and they're going to have to want to make peace too, or we're going to have nothing to do with it any longer. So, Daniela, I'm actually going to open the floor to you. Uh, as we actually just heard, Trump has essentially changed his decision on, on Jerusalem, saying that there's no way we're going to give it up, uh, which is contrary to what he said on December 6th. So how do you think that that's going to change everything that's going on here in Israel? I'm not sure that it will change anything all that much. I mean, the fact of the reality is that in, uh, in Trump's announcement of recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, um, although that was something that we all knew to be the case, I can I live here in Israel and have for years now, uh, although I'm from the States, and mm. consider Jerusalem to be Israel's capital. But rec recognition of the capital as such before and outside the parameters of a negotiated solution is fundamentally dangerous to the possibility of a negotiated solution going forward. Mm. Trump announcing at the Davos Forum that... Uh, that J Jerusalem is off the table actually just confirmed what his original announcement indicated, which is that he actually doesn't indicate, uh, doesn't intend to have a seat at a negotiating table between the Israelis and the Palestinians, mm -hmm. and um, isn't isn't moving forward on that track. Uh, Dr. Kadar, how would you respond to that, and and you know, in terms of how the Arab world is also responding to this? Well, what we just heard is totally detached from the reality of the Middle East. It might be the situation in America, but not here. Here in the Middle East, peace is given only to an entity which is viewed as invincible. Not to the one who looks for peace and begs for peace and crawls for peace and licks others' shoes in order to get some peace. This, in, th this decision of America to move the embassy accompanied with decisions of many other countries to move the embassies to Jerusalem will contribute to peace because it will give Israel the image of invincible. And this is a condition to have peace in this unfortunate region. This, this region works to different rules, which you might be aware of in, in the United States or in Europe. Here you have to act like in, you know, in Rome, act like a woman. This is the place to, 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 to understand the culture of the Middle East, the nature of the Middle East, and the behavior of the Middle East. And this is why moving the embassy to Jerusalem and recognizing Jerusalem, united Jerusalem, as the capital of Israel, will contribute tremendously to peace. But then wouldn't you agree, and I'll kind of bring it over to this side of the table, wouldn't you then agree that combining, uh, as you said, you know, the removing Trump from, this, from the conversation as Abbas and Erekat and many of the Palestinian Authority have also said, 
Is that not true, that coupled with the cuts to UNRWA, plus his comments about Jerusalem, that he really is removing himself from, from the story? I'll actually bring it over here this time. Uh, Ambassador. Well, um, I'm listening with uh, dismay to uh, the short speech by Dr. Keda, which is uh, uh, quite surprising to hear from a Jew. There is no humility in his words. And uh, before the Second World sure War, but, but the, before the Second World War, in Europe, this was the idea, invincibility. Europe was destroyed to, into ashes with this idea. The post-World uh, no, War no, II... No, uh, that's completely wait, wait, incorrect. wait, wait. I'll come to you for a Behave part. yourself. Wait until I finish. Um, I, I am <laughs> a, a convinced that only if the Palestinians and Israelis arrive at a table uh, in parity, not disparity, or at least parity of esteem, we might uh, be able to cross uh, the Rubicon and uh, arrive to some form of uh, compromise. Well, uh, I'm dismayed to hear that the left is still uh, trying to preach that the earth is flat. Um, first of all, the world was destroyed not because of in in invincibility, but because of appeasement and because the British tried to appease Hitler rather than deter him. Now, the thing about peace, peace is a very di dictatorial word because you can't be an opponent of peace, but it's also a very dictatorial word, a, a very deceptive word, hmm. because the same, the same word can mean completely opposite situations. On the one hand, it can mean harmony between the parties, and, the other and on the other hand, it can mean non-belligerence by, maintained by deterrence. Now, it depends on the circumstances which kind of peace, harmony or deterrence, is applicable. And uh, a peace of harmony is clearly applicable in a, in a context where there are, uh, are democracies. But when you have states and regimes like you have in the Middle East, as soon as they feel weakness, they will attack them. You've seen it time and well, time so again. I, I hate to not you, but, but then if, if harmony, how can you achieve harmony you through, through a coercive... You can't. You can't. Position. You can't, and that's the danger. If you try to achieve a peace of harmony when only a peace of deterrence is applicable, you will not bring peace cl closer. You will bring war closer. And there is no harmony at the moment. So you're saying that Trump is bringing us closer to war? No, I'm, I'm not saying. I I'm not, don't think tr Trump is making a contribution one way or the other. I will welcome his, his announcement because there's a new sheriff in town. Instead of having the anti-colonialist a theme of the Obama administration. Now you have an assertive pro-Western uh, uh, attitude from the, the, the... No, not colonialist. <laughs> not colonialist at all, no. Uh, I don't think that the Jews are colonialists in, in, in their homeland. I mean, well, maybe you do. Uh, <coughs> but uh, but, but the, there's a new sheriff in town, and there's, the, there's a new orchestra, and there's a new tune, and the Palestinians are out of tune. So, okay, so let's, let's go back now a second to... Trump's uh, punishments, we could say, his cuts to uh, UNRWA and to uh, the Palestinian Authority, nearly half of, of that funding has been cut. And Trump, especially after this latest snub where Pence was refused to be received in, in the West Bank, now President Trump is saying, you know, because of that, plus everything else, I'm going to even cut more. Is, he, is this collective punishment? Is that, is that coercion? Is it fair, you know, just common sense. I think that's completely unfair. And to be honest, I'd like to hear what Dr. Kedar has to say about uh, the Palestinian reaction to Trump's decision and how that would indicate that Trump's decision brought us any closer to peace. It didn't. Um, the fact of the reality is that it did nothing but to anger a side that uh, is, is very much a side that we could have negotiated with. Well, after 70 years of Israeli stupidity, by looking for peace where it doesn't exist, uh, it needs time to change the mindset of the Middle East to view us as invincible rather than slime which begs for peace as the Ministry of Foreign Affairs tries to portray for Israel. This is why the ministry is out of anything because now there are two other, uh, three other ministries which actually took parts from the activity of the Ministry of the Foreign Affairs only because the ministry is stuck with people who were nominated by Perez, by Balin, and by Alon Liel. The, all those who still control the uh, uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and this is the, one, one of the problems. But how, however, however, in the Middle East, there are two kinds of peace. One is named Salam, and this is what people talk to us about, and the other names Sulh. Salam means ceasefire with a document. 
This is what it means in Arabic. And what can I do? I'm dealing with the Arabic only for more, more than 50 years. This is what it means, unfortunately. But this is what people uh, 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 offer us. We mean sulh, something totally different. Um, uh, cooperation, whatever, harmony, harmony whatever you like. Harmony. Harmony. This hmm. cannot be given to Jews because we Jews are foreigners as it's viewed by Muslims. We have no rights. We have the right to live under the mercy of Islam. Is the yeah. Dhimis write a book by Baki Or, so you, you learn something about how people look at us. And that we have no right because our religion is null and void, according to Islam. Uh, this country entirely is occupied by Jews. This is how people look at us. Even Palestinians, until this very day, they portray the land of Israel complete from the river mm -hmm. to the sea, Palestine will be free. Time and time again, so, the so this have is, said that they're only so looking for is, recognition no, on 22% no, 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 no. of their No, 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 this is the first land. slice. What, what this is the, 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 the salami What uh, recognition uh, were they looking for uh, in, in scheme, which they want to cut where they, where, they, where, they yeah. where they threatened to massacre the Jews when there wasn't a square inch of Judea and Samaria under Israeli so-called occupation. Yeah. What, what, what were they trying to liberate then? But, you know, just going back to what Dr. Kedal said, the basically there are two kinds of configurations and conflictual situations. On the one hand, you can have a situation where one of the protagonists makes a, a concession, the other side reckons, uh, recognizes it as a concession and feels obliged to make a counter concession. And so by a process of concessions and counter concessions, you converge to an amicable solution. But there's another kind of conflictual situation where you make a concession and the guy says, gee, why did you do that? I'd never do that. It must be a sign of weakness. So instead of, so instead of eliciting a, 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 a counter concession, it elicits a demand for more concessions and more concessions and more concessions until the, the, instead of converging to an amicable mm -hmm. solution, it spirals out into a violent solution. Now you have to decide which mm -hmm. situation is, 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 is relevant for Israel. I think the facts speak clearly that yeah. the more concessions we make, we only generate demands for more concessions. Mm -hmm. You know, I, s sadly, I'm the, old enough. The appeasement makes the aggressor more aggressive sure, argument. Sure, sure. So let's move on first, uh, moving back away from Davos. While the international community seems to still prefer the two-state solution, a recently released poll suggests that support for two states among Israelis and Palestinians is at an all-time low, just 53% of Israelis and 47% of Palestinians. The insistence of President Trump saying that Jerusalem is off the negotiating table translates into that peace is off the negotiating table. This is very disrespectful to the international community, very disrespectful to international law. This is just rewarding the Israeli aggression and occupation and throwing this region down the path of chaos and lawlessness and bloodshed. This must stop what Palestinians and Israelis need they need a meaningful peace process that would lead to the two-state solution, the state of Palestine, with East Jerusalem as its capital, to live side by side in peace and security with the state of Israel on the 1967 lines. This is what's needed, and everything else is throwing Palestinian and Israelis deeper and deeper into the cycle of violence and counter-violence. I encourage anyone who cares about the cause of a durable and just peace in the Middle East to read President Abbas's speech for yourself. A speech that indulges in outrageous and discredited conspiracy theories is not the speech of a person with the courage and the will to seek peace. Despite all of this, the United States remains fully prepared and eager to pursue peace. We have done nothing to prejudge the final borders of Jerusalem. We have done nothing to alter the status of the holy sites. We remain committed to the possibility and potential of two states, if agreed to by the parties. So, uh, Ambassador Baruch, I, uh, thank you. <laughs> I really was going to say yes, with you next. yes. <laughs> That's <laughs> okay. So uh, again, we just heard two drastically differing oppo uh, uh, opinions that came to the same conclusion that the two-state solution is the only thing necessary. Uh, that the only thing that can come from this. Now, I believe you to be a supporter of two states for two peoples. Now, why do you think then? that the support for it across the board is decreasing? I think uh, people um, lost hope on the Palestinian side. And, uh, Not on the Israeli side? On the Palestinian side. And lost hope on the Israeli side that uh, a government led by Netanyahu uh, will ever uh, uh, move in uh, the direction of two-state solution. Um, actually, the partition is uh, a historic 
uh, fact present in our, uh, since uh, the very beginning of uh, British mandatory uh, uh, rule, uh, which uh, preceded the creation of the State of Israel. And uh, we, I think uh, we have been um, uh, developing um, a state, uh, a Jewish and democratic state uh, that was uh, interfered with, with uh, the occupation that started in 67. Um, it was alternative to occupation, and, defeat? Uh, mm -hmm. And um, uh, alternative to occupation is allowing the Palestinians the same that we have, and that is uh, self-determination in which, dignity which, and liberty. Which part of they want to kill you or are you having difficulty grasping? They don't grasping? want to kill me. Oh, well, they so don't you want to so kill so you. So this, you read the founding so documents? This actually, so they this brings me actually to my, to my very next I question. Am, I am sufficiently intertwined with Palestinians to know that this is a huge lie that is misleading us in a tragic way. Palestinians by and large, you will find always the, the very extremists that outweigh the guys that are sitting here. But by and large, they want uh, a compromise. And they want a compromise that allows them sovereignty over 22% of the land. And that the rhetoric land. is actually exactly the problem. That is why a public may lose hope about the two-state solution, because we have leaders on each side Excuse that are convincing Excuse everyone me. that these two uh, peoples Nathan, Nathan are Nathan fundamentally Nathan Nathan enemies Nathan when they are Nathan not. Netanyahu wasn't prime minister for much of the process. They had uh, Yitzhak Rabin, and they had Paris, and they had Ahud Barak, and they had, and they had, and they had yeah, before, 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 before yes. the Oslo agreements. Since the Oslo agreements, they've, they've had many more prime ministers who weren't Netanyahu than prime ministers that were. But really, you, you know, I hope, I hope this poll indicates that the nation is finally waking up from a drunken stupor. You, you, mm -hmm. you know, this issue, this issue I, I, sadly, I'm old enough to remember when promoting a, a Palestinian state was borderline treason. In fact, if you, if, if, if you look at today's penal code, uh, uh, clause 97b, you'll find that moving territory from Israel to a foreign power is punishable by death. In today's legal, in, in today's uh, uh, penal code. So that was how, how, how uh, gravely the, the, the legislators looked at the issue of giving up sovereignty over territory. But since then, the, 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 the public has been assaulted and battered and, int and intimidated by the tyranny of political correctness well, until, and, until so we, we, we've been convinced that okay. setting up a homophobic, misogynistic, well, I wanna bring the, I wanna, Muslim I wanna majority bring it back tyranny, to, I want to bring it back to uh, that's what you, you think it will be I anything wanna bring else, it back to, homophobic, to something else. misogynistic, Muslim majority tyranny, Dr. that's Trump, what you're advocating. I'd like, to, I'd like to go back to a point previously made by, by the ambassador um, that, you know, uh, the leadership does not necessarily reflect the populace. And right now, that's actually what we're seeing. We also have additional reports in addition to this poll that shows only 47% of Palestinians are currently supporting a two-state. Uh, we also have a lot of evidence that shows that the younger generation in the Palestinian territories is extraordinarily dissatisfied with their leadership, with Hamas and Fatah. Um, so actually, uh, on this side of the table, you know, how, how might that translate in the next few years? Could we have well, a much more robust possibility of peace? First of all, I have to relate, to, relate to, to, to the poll. Uh, apparently, Israelis are a bit wiser than the politicians. They understand very well that a Palestinian state, uh, being sovereign state, will be, will be a, a Hamastan, either by elections, as already happened in 2006, or by a mil military coup, as happened in Gaza in 2007. What the heck will prevent it when it is a, a Palestinian state? Will our wishes prevent it? Forget it. So the Israelis say, well, if I have to, to live near another Hamastan, and, and we see what happens in Gaza, we don't want it. And this is as simple as it is. The Israeli population really today understands the dangers, before anything else, the dangers of a, a Palestinian state on, you know what, Ben Gurion Airport. Ben Gurion Airport will be in the 
in, in, in the range of a slingshot. So how, so how would you, how so would you I, respond? I, I'm sorry, you, you said you're old enough to remember all these historical moments. I'm young enough to know where the pulse of the future generation is at. I work with American college students who come from the Jewish community every single nothing. day, who are, who are the future of Israel's support fault. for on. this country. Useful the idiots. fact of the matter is that if this country does not change course and work towards peace, there was a Pew poll that came out just last week that said that 27% of Democrats support Israelis over Palestinians right now. That is dangerous for Wait, the future of Israel. Future that era. is not something that is in Israel's, best in Israel's best mm -hmm. interest. In Israel's best interest is to have bipartisan support from the United States. And the reason that is not currently <laughs> happening is because this government pursues policies of creeping and annexation of the West Bank and moves farther and farther away from peace and moves closer and closer to a Trump administration that American Jews well, are fundamentally distanced yourself. from. Listen to yourself. What you say actually is that because Americans are enormous about the Middle East, we have to commit a suicide. Only because, because they don't support us best in our interest. Interest. Commit to suicide. Because, because it is in Israel's best case, interest to have a Jewish hasn't. and democratic which future, hasn't. which is only possible by a two-state solution. No, 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 no. That is what well, the I think this guy is, is taking us to doomsday because of his extreme uh, no, convictions. You are, you are not, not, you are not realistic. Uh, you have realistic. no answer. Okay, you are answer not me. Realistic. Can you, can you, uh, listen, I want to ask, can you, can you answer me? Can you, can you prevent the turning of a Palestinian state into, into another Hamastan? Yeah, of course. Uh, how can oh, you prevent course. it? Oh, why don't you of present course. it? Why how can you prevent it? So so you tell me how. Hold on, let okay, me respond. I'm listening. Simply by developing trust. <laughs> Simply by developing trust. Do, do you watch and the news? Do you watch no, the news? I don't watch the news. I have... Uh, Where do you live? I, yeah. how long I, I live in Jerusalem. In what? In, in what? In, uh, so you see, in what planet do you because do? Uh -huh. because in your view there is no way trust can be built. You need to be the of strong course. man How in many the neighborhood. Have to die? But the strong How man, have the to strong die? man in the neighborhood is doomed. Oh. You know what? Is Just doomed. Listen. You know, all the years when people kept kept preaching us, make peace with Assad because he is strong man. <laughs> Okay, this was the slogan exactly. of the exactly. peace movements all those years Ima until imagine, imagine, uh, imagine uh, until he passed away. Make peace with him because he's because he's strong man. Precisely. Now you I, okay? I how do you explain it? That. I I say well, you are contradicting yourself because if you say I'm invincible, then people come to me to make peace. Yes, this is exactly what Assad was saying. I'm invincible, and that is how people will yes, make peace with me. And him. you know yes, what we, the fate no, of Assad we just was. But he was we very weak, left. and this is why Israel he didn't, was weak. didn't... didn't he, yes. he was ruthless. Just, just look, he just was look at ruthless. Syria today, what happened to his, to his uh, strongness, uh, which turned into, uh, Syria into, into a mayhem. And this is what I mean. Israel is, but you know, Assad you, 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 no, no, but turned victorious no, in this mayhem. Who, no, 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 no. You are contradicting no, no, yourself. No, 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 not at all. You and you are not you used to be to saying, saying that you are contradicting strong yourself. Strong means uh, well, strong society. Look, let, let me tell you what strong is. Organizations like J Street, Shalom Achshav, uh, 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 the New Israel Fund, all these organizations give Israel an image of weak society tired society, a society which sell, give everything in order to get a paper which is with the name peace this is appears complete in it. And this, is, oh, and this is what... This is complete no, no, nonsense. Not at all. This, this and what, I'm not going to hear from you pontificating me for supporting Shalom Akshav at J Street. No, no, no. no. This is how what it is. You are not no, no, no. going to I'm pontificate me. What would you what I'm trying to tell what you, what this is how it is viewed. Give me a scenario where if it happens, you'd say, you know what, I can see there. You know, you are South African, right? What's that going the, 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 the white government of South Africa oh. was strong enough to sustain no. everything. Oh, and, and you, you are wrong because they I'm failed. I'm not this, wrong. The, and uh, you know well, that look, I'm not wrong. Look, I, well, I apologize. Situation. Situation. Unfortunately, completely I have to cut of off course, the conversation. Of course. I'm very it's sorry. We, we reached our time. I have to cut off our conversation here. That's all the time we have today for ILTV's Israel Weekly. Yeah, I'd like again to thank our guests, Dr. Mordechai Kedar, Ambassador Ilan Baruch, Daniel Tolchinsky, and Dr. Martin Sherman, and thanks to all of you again for tuning in. Remember to follow us on Facebook at Israel English News and on Twitter at ILTV News. I'm Aaron Porras, and we'll see you next week.